there's enormous value in being together in person. I wouldn't ever want to be a proponent of replacing that. I actually think it should be more in person if you can. But there's too much convenience factors. There are too many other factors that make it necessary to have a hybrid workforce going forward. We're going to see this as the norm. This is breaking those barriers down so that everyone can see it's ready. This is not a future vision anymore. This is now how work will proceed. And this was a, I think it was an, an annual get together for a group at Google. There were 22,000 people that were invited. We're going to play a video, but like you said, they could generate content, gated, gated communities. You could get tokens for like planting trees. I've seen this thing a bunch of times. And again, they, they used it. And the stat that, that Colin talked about, and we can talk about it maybe afterwards, was I think you gave people, this was the big one that probably why we ended up partnering with you guys, is that you gave them the option of a 2D experience mm. or a 3D experience. Yeah. And again, you could argue that some of these people maybe didn't want to go to this thing. They were going to click in and just say, I, I was told to show up. And the stats for the ones that opted into the 3D experience was something crazy. It was like 96%, yeah. I think. Yeah, and th those stats were extraordinary. But even the bigger stat was the amount of time that people spent. So if you opted in for the 2D experience, which about 4% did, um, they spent, I don't know what it was, less than seven minutes, four to seven minutes. It's like 47 minutes or something like extraordinary if you went into the 3D. And it's not hard to see why once you're in. And again, it's not because of the ray tracing on the light hitting the water. <laughs> You'll see it's, it looks like Google. It's branded Google, it looks like Google. It's cool, but it's not about the graphical fidelity. It's about the adventures you can go on, the things you can learn, the people you can run into, the things you can do, and some of the fun that you can have. All right, we're gonna play the video now. This is what you built for Google. Here it is. Google chose to host their cloud developer conference on the Vatim platform because Vatim is the only enterprise ready solution that can host thousands of people in the same space. What's important about that is that the competition shards their spaces and they don't put everybody in a single instance. Vatim does. 20,000 people showed up and enjoyed the festivities. The experience was hosted by holograms that introduced you to the space. User generated content was created so that people could watch what others had to say about the event and participate. And each action that a user took within the space was rewarded with points. So all of the actions, interactions are tracked and rewarded with a live leaderboard. A good example is planting trees. You get a point for grabbing a tree or a plant. You you get a point for planting it. You then can update your avatar live and in real time and enjoy the experience with other people live in the same space. An important part is also the developer platform that Vatim offers. There were pieces of the platform that didn't exist that Google wanted to have. For example, they wanted everybody to be muted when they were watching content. This didn't exist, so it was created using the plugin architecture of Vatim. And also for accessibility, they wanted closed captioning and people to be able to pause and stop the video. Users' progress was tracked in a number of ways, including awarding points for participating in quizzes, watching sessions, networking. There was a live leaderboard so you could see where you were compared to everybody else and track your own progress. You could unlock certain things for your avatars, new hairstyles, sunglasses, shirts, by completing certain tasks within the space. Networking sessions were driven with simple titles and areas that were created specifically designed for the purpose of getting to know people within the space. An important feature on the Vatim platform Form is token gating. You cannot gain access to a certain area without performing a task or purchasing access. In this example with Google, you had to watch a video, answer a question correctly before you could move to the next area. It's a great module tracking technique. It's a great way to provide access for meet and greets and beyond. Thousands of people attended simultaneously from over 100 countries from around the world. The return visits were incredible. People averaged 48 minutes within the space. And one of my favorite stats of anything I've ever done. We gave people two options, the 2D version and then the Vatim Spatialized 3D experience. 98% of the people chose to be in that 3D environment. So when I, th I see that, I think about our virtual movie premiere and about the communities that we can create about someone together, coming together for an event. Mm. And that's what I'm 
thinking we want to do with Vadim in the next couple of months. Um, what more can you tell us about what we just saw with that Google event? It's a big deal. Yeah. Obviously, it's a big company. The fact that they chose your platform to do it. Yeah. And then the numbers, I can't overestimate those. Like you said, 11,000 concurrents. Most sites couldn't handle a tenth of that. Oh, yeah. Scale matters. But again, back to our earlier conversation, the most important thing that matters is the integration of all the different pieces that have to come together, which again, you can find point solutions that do a lot of these things. This is an incredibly vibrant space and brilliant people building these various things. Just no one's really stitched them together in a way that's easy to, to use and scale on an enterprise class you know, way that I think is, could really now break through and make this ubiquitous. The most important thing, like it's interesting as I think about your question, when we talk about the, the PepsiCo example, the Frito-Lay example, um, I said the most important thing is really that you now have this ongoing communication channel. Well, that's important here too. And I do want to emphasize it's one of the things that's happening is that data is being gathered, business outcomes are being achieved. But to me, the most important or extraordinary part of this opportunity that, that we engaged in is the stuff that happened in the platform and in the event that the platform didn't do before the event. This was built, we come from an enterprise software background, this was built to be built on. A lot of people call things a platform. Why? Well, because I guess you can use it for different purposes. It's also an application. Platform in our parlance, what it means is that the underlying capability can be extended to build your application on top. We have a unique capability here that I think is the most important part of our vision. We call it a plug-in architecture. It means that you can write code. You don't wait for our roadmap to catch up to what you need. You can write code. You can write what you want it to do. And then you can codify it into a plugin. So it's an actual thing. It has a little picture. It's a little easy to install thing. Like think of it as an app store. Mm -hmm. It is an app store in a way for plugins. And then you can keep it for your own proprietary use, for your um, company to, to say, we now have this unusual capability on this platform, or you can resell it. That's the real opportunity. That's what's so exciting about this, is that our app store, our, our marketplace of plugins is starting to fill up with all these different third parties doing things that we're like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> you know, we're, we're pretty smart, but we're not as smart as most people out there that, have, that know what their actual business is. This is a horizontal platform. The verticals, uh, the things that you really know that you need, we couldn't possibly anticipate. It's unimaginable the types of things that can be built when you combine these various capabilities. Fine, go build them. And that's what's fun is to wake up every morning and say, what? I didn't, I didn't know we could do that. Well, we couldn't yesterday, right? And so we see some really interesting things being, being built there. That's the beauty of open source. And you come from that decentralized mentality. And um, that's how things can truly grow at scale these days. Right? I think so. Well, certainly how we see us scaling. So I, I think the, the advantages that this has brought to the industry has now allowed us to partner with groups like Deloitte. You may have seen the press release yeah. that Deloitte put out. It was big. I was really excited about that. I and mean, this is a 150 year old organization, as conservative as you can be. And it's taken us a long time to go through the hoops necessary of security and vetting and all the different pieces you might imagine. But what's most gratifying about it is there are 400,000 people that are out there. They all have their own needs with their companies, their governments, the projects that they represent. And with the plugin architecture, they can now write that. And we're seeing things being built by Deloitte, by Ernst & Young, by, by agencies, by Dentsu, I mean, we, we, we're looking at things that we're now starting to understand that our opportunity is not to build the best set of um, use cases, is to build the best platform that other people can build the use cases. To continue watching the rest of the episode for free, visit our website, londonreal.tv, or click the link in the description below.